Okay, we're just going to talk about moles and Avogadro's number or constant, and I'll explain what the difference between the number and the constant are. Um, but before I start, I'd just like to introduce to Amadeo Avogadro. This is the guy, and he basically looked at the the number of particles, or theorized the number of particles in a given volume. Say this is a balloon. And he said the number of particles in a given balloon will be proportional to the volume that you get. So if we have so many particles filling up this balloon, then no matter what the substance is, it would be just the number of particles that would actually give rise to the volume of the balloon. And this was further developed, maybe I should have done this earlier, but this was further developed by Johann Le Schmidt, and I'll bring his picture up in a minute when I finish drawing all these particles. So Johann Le Schmidt also came up, so this guy let me just, I've got his name written down here actually. Le Schmidt. He um, came away with a very similar theory looking at the um, number density and showed that it was proportional to Avogadro's number for the number of particles. So, what is Avogadro's number and what does it mean and what does it relate to in terms of a mole? Well, if I put the number up here, I might have to actually just sacrifice Le Schmidt. I put Le Schmidt up because sometimes you'll see, rather than um, Avogadro's uh, constant being called Na, sometimes you see it as L, and that's where the L comes from, it's Le Schmidt. Um, so it's often referred to as L, as the Avogadro's uh, constant. So Avogadro's constant is 6.022 and all the rest times 10 to the 23 that's a huge number that means there are 6 times 10 to the 23 particles they can be atoms they can be molecules they can be people all this means is this is what this means is that Avogadro's constant is this value now that's a large number and we call that one mole okay now I'm kind of going backwards in my thought process here so one mole which you'll have heard of moles and Avogadro's number one mole equals I'm going to use the approximation 6 times 10 to 23 and I'll call it particles for now particles so instead of writing 6 times 10 to the 23 particles, we just call it 1 mole. That's our standard. Now, that's what 1 mole equals. It means there are 6 times 10 to the 23, so that's 6 with 23 zeros after it. So it's a very large number of particles. Now, in chemistry, we refer to these particles as either atoms or molecules. So we'll stick with that for now. We'll stick with... Um, uh, atoms and molecules and we'll try and give it an example so what does that mean if we take an element so let's just bring up the periodic table a little bit I'll just move that up a little bit I'll just grab periodic table if we take an element I just grab that corner of the periodic table so you can see a few things and for example we look at hydrogen now hydrogen has a let's do a different color hydrogen has got two values here and you notice all the elements have got these two values so this one here if I choose actually it's probably easy to see with sodium you've all heard of sodium probably with sodium chloride salt a, t a typical table salt and sodium as you know if you put it into water 
it'll start fizzing away. So this value here, 11, and this value here, which is about 23, we'll call it 23 because it's 22.99. Now this here is called the atomic number. And this here is called the mass number. Okay, now it's the mass number that we're going to deal with because that gives the mass of the overall atom and the element in this case for sodium. Now the atomic number tells you how many protons you've got. The mass number tells you how many protons and neutrons together. So I call this P for protons. And this one is P plus N. Now the mass number, given the electrons as well, um, is, is the overall mass of the, of the um, element. Now if we made a molecule out of this, say we make water. Now water is made out of hydrogen and oxygen. Now hydrogen though has got a mass number of about one. Now oxygen, let's see if I can just just um, sweep this across, let's just get rid of these now, very quickly. Sweep oxygen across so you can see it. So oxygen here, here has got an atomic number of 8 but a mass number of nearly 16. So we've got hydrogen's got 1 oxygen's got 16 now i'm just going to get rid of the whole of this periodic table because it's in the way just drop it down there like that whoops didn't like that just drop it down there like that okay and we'll just get rid of this now we'll take water now it'll all become clear in a second i'll use blue oxygen hydrogen hydrogen I'm going to put the mass, now it's a mass, not an atomic number. The mass number for oxygen is 16, and for hydrogen is 1, and for hydrogen is 1. Now then, the total mass for water is mass equals, for water, is hydrogen plus hydrogen plus oxygen. Now we just put the numbers above. So that would be 1 plus 1 plus 16. And that equals 18. So the, the molecular mass of water is 18. So molecular mass. Of H2O equals 18. Now then, that's all very well, but what does that mean to us? If we wanted to weigh that out, how do we know how many molecules we've got? If we measure it in a measuring cylinder, or in a beaker, or on a, on a weighing scale, then how do we know how many molecules of water we have to react with whatever we want to react it with? Well, this is where Avogadro's number comes in, and this is where the mole comes in. Because what this means is, this 18 is a mass of one particle. We want to know, really, what the mass of um, the particles are in our everyday life. Now if I just put the mass of a proton, a neutron, an electron, just down below, and I'll take them off, and you can pause it if you want to have a look at the numbers, but you see how small these are for everyday life. So that's the mass of the proton, that's the mass of the neutron, and this is the mass of an electron. So very simply, if we added them together, we'd be looking at about four water, well, four hydrogen itself, just for hydrogen, we'd be looking at, let's see if we can do the maths here, so that's about 3.2, 3.2 times 10 to the 27. Now this is just an approximation. Okay, kilograms. 
right? So that's an incredibly small value. We have got 27 zeros before it gets to this 3. So it's 0 0.0000000 no, 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 27 times kilograms. That's incredibly small. You can't possibly weigh that out. And that's how much just that hydrogen weighs. We've now got to times that by 18 to get how much water weighs. So 3.2 times 18 to give us an approximate mass for water. It, again, it's going to be incredibly small and it's going to have 27 zeros behind it. So that's no good. We can't weigh out one atom, I mean, sorry, one molecule of water. So what we do, we weigh out 6 times 10 to the 23 particles of water. So I'll just get rid of this. So we need to equate molecules into lots of molecules. Now it has to be pure substance when we're doing this, so it has to be like pure water. So we take pure water, and we know that we've got 6 times 10 to the 23 particles in one mole. So what is one mole of water? Well, to do that, we need to find out the mass of water. Now the mass of water is 18, so that's what all these atoms add up to. So one mole of water becomes 18 grams. So one mole of H2O equals 18 grams because we know that 1 mole equals 6 times 10 to the 23 particles so 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water equals 18 grams so just like we've got the the um, atomic masses for oxygen and carbon and things like that, we also have it for molecules. So let's just do another one. Let's do gold. Let's have a look at gold. So gold's a good one. Just sweep that down there. It's a gold bar. Okay, this is one of the heaviest uh, gold bars. And this actually weighs 250 kilograms. Incredibly big bar yeah so 250 kilograms so 250 kilograms of gold now if you look in the periodic table for gold gold let's see if I can drag this across without making a mess of it let's have a look at gold in the periodic table so gold is here okay now I'll just move it down a little bit because it's interfering with the background so I don't know if you can see this, but gold, if I just circle it in, just circle it in red, is here. Okay, that's gold. And if you look here, that's its mass number, 196.97. Now we were going to approximate it to 197, just for calculation's sake. So it's got 79 protons and it's got a total mass of 197. Okay, so that's gold. So we know what the atomic mass of gold is. We know that what at one atom what mass one atom has. So if one atom has a mass of 197 and we've got 250 kilograms of that and we know that from this calculation one mole it will give us should give us 197 grams okay so one mole of gold, that's gold, that's the symbol for gold, equals 197 grams. Okay, and we got that from the periodic table. All you need to do is add up, the, like we did for water, is just add up the, uh, the, mole the atomic masses, sorry, in this case. So the atomic mass will tell you how much in grams one mole that is 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules of a substance will weigh now we've got 250 kilograms so how many moles have we got there well all we need to do is divide 250 by 197 grams 
and that will tell us how many moles we've got. And if we do that calculation, we should find, if my calculations are correct, we have got 1,269 moles of gold. Okay? And all that really, really means is we've got 1,269 multiplied by 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms of gold. And that, that's a 10. And that is all that moles are, and that's all Avogadro's number is. Now, the difference between Avogadro's number and Avogadro's constant is that for Avogadro, because I did mention I'd, I'd say that, so Avogadro's number, n, is just 6 times 10 to the 23 particles. Because 6 times 10 to the 23 particles. Okay? Now, na is often quoted as um, as Avogadro's constant and that is just given the value per mole okay so it's 6 times 10 to 23 per mole okay per mole of substance and that's what a mole means you basically take all the uh, atomic masses or molecular mass of your species and you divide it by um, this number and that will give you how many particles you've got present. Oh, sorry, multiply by that number and give you the number of particles you've got present. But we don't t typically, as chemists, talk about how many particles we've got. We'll talk about how many moles, and a mole just means how many particles, really. But since this is such a big number, we refer it and we'll break it down to um, moles. So that is moles and Avogadro's number. You'll be coming across this in more detail um, throughout the rest of the tutorials and keep your eye out for it. Moles play a very important role in chemistry, especially when you're mixing things together because what you want to do is basically um, sorry, I don't know what happened then. So what you want to do is basically add the right quantities. You don't want two lots of water, for example, reacting with sodium. You might want one lot of water reacting with one lot of, of sodium. And in order to work out how much to add, then you've got to use this concept of the mole and this number of particles. So you add the exact same amount to each and so on and so on. But we'll go into more detail in that in future tutorials. So that is Avogadro's number.